everyone. Pastor Dale here with Stefan Vassiloff, the small groups uh, pastor here at the NAS. And so, so happy to have you here this morning with us, Stefan. Today, uh, we're going to talk about turning from evil. Um, scripture tells us, in fact, that we should flee immorality. We should run away from it. It's not one of those things that we even toy around with and play with. And so, as we spend this first 10 days uh, in the return seeking God, uh, humbling ourselves, seeking His face, turning from our wicked ways, that's what we're talking about today, is that that turn that takes place, that repentance that happens. We'll talk about repentance later, but it starts with this turn that, that has to happen and take place. So, Pastor Stephan, um, talk to us a little bit about this in your own life, some, some, some things that have happened in your life. I know you weren't, you weren't necessarily a wild buck uh, growing up, but you've had some things in your life where you're going, I need to maybe turn from these things. I guess it depends on if you, who you ask. Who you that. ask, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's... We were just briefly chatting, but this topic is just pretty timely for me. We, you know, I'm in a prayer group on Wednesday mornings, and um, it's not many times that you feel like, hey, I'm just going to confess something in <laughs> yeah. front of everybody. But one of the guys was praying, and I just sensed like God speak to me and say, like, you need to just be honest about yourself in front of these men. And we're on a Zoom call, and I'm fighting that. And so I just said, guys, I know this is going to be weird, but I just feel like I need to deal with some of the things I'm wrestling with personally, just be honest about that and call it out, you know, yeah. make war on it in yeah. a way. And so I was like, I don't know if this is for you guys or just for me, <laughs> but I'm just going to confess what I'm struggling with and be pointed about it. I'm not right. going to try and just hide that. Yeah. Right. And be obscure about it, but no, this is what it is. And Lord help me deal with it. And so I think a big part for me lately, even personally, maybe some people can relate to that is just being straight up about it yeah you know don't be obscure deal with yep. it it's this and just call it out and ask god to help you deal with that and be honest with one another when you do that i feel like when you cross that threshold of you know i'm scared that pastor dale is going to hear me talk about what yeah. i wrestle with <laughs> yeah. or everyone and in the scripture says we're all dealing with all your brothers around the world dealing with similar issues right. these are nothing new under the sun so i would just encourage you as you know i'm walking through this myself is don't worry about what others think. You know, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive yeah. us and cleanse us of unrighteousness. Yeah, so. that first John 1, 9. I was getting ready to... Okay. That same verse was running through my head you as you were talking. That sense of, man, I got, I've got to confess it. If I confess it, God can forgive it. If I keep it in and I'm not confessing it, it's just, it continues to eat me up. So there's the that step of confessing, uh, which is the first step of really then turning. There's the the confessing of our sins, the saying, I'm not going to do this anymore, but I actually have to make the the effort to turn and flee from immorality. Um, I remember I was at a, I was at a um, church one day in Alpharetta, Georgia, uh, Andy Stanley's church, and he had a guy mm -hmm. of all days. I, I was at a youth workers conference, but I thought I want to go see this church. And so while I'm there, the whole day he was interviewing this guy who'd been addicted to pornography. And so the guy was there and his ex-wife, they'd actually gotten divorced because he had fallen into affairs, a number of other things. Well, he'd come back to Christ. His wife, ex-wife, actually worked for the company that he worked with where they would go tell people about the dangers of pornography and how it can mm -hmm. tear your marriage apart. So it was really a weird, weird day. But as, as uh, they went through, Andy Stanley would ask him the question, you know, at this point in your life, at this point in your story, how addicted would you say you were to pornography. And the guy said, you know, probably on a scale of one to 10, I would say I was at a four, but I was probably really at a seven. And then later on the story, and he would say, well, how addicted would you say here? And he'd say, well, probably I would still have said I was at a four, but I was at like an eight. You know, he said, because it, so anyway, what was crazy was at the very end, uh, Andy Stanley looked at the guy and said, um, is there anything you'd like to talk to everybody about? And the guy said, yeah, you kept asking me how addicted I was at certain points. And he said, um, I don't know that that's the right question. He said, because a lot of men can just justify where they are and think that they're in one spot. And he said, so I don't ask people how addicted they are. He said, I ask them, uh, do you feel like you're becoming more addicted or standing still? Or do you feel like you're moving away from the addiction? He said, because if you feel like you're standing still, he said, I would have told you the whole time. I was standing still. I wasn't moving at all. But looking back, I was becoming more and more and more addicted. And uh, Andy Stanley got up and quoted the scripture that said, flee immorality. Yeah. The guy said, if, you're, if you think you're standing still, 
you're not. You're yeah. becoming more. You have to run from it. You have to turn from it. Absolutely. Now, what would you say to that? Yeah. As you, as you work with people. Yeah, I think there's this. Uh, I think the passage of scripture that comes to mind is uh, First Peter. It says, you know, brothers and sisters, I urge you to stay away from these sinful desires that wage war. Yeah. On your soul. Yeah. And so the language we're using can seem like you know, flee or yeah. wage war. It's like, man, what are you guys talking about here? Like putting on a battle fight. And it's yeah. like, well, that's the mind that we have to approach this with. And sometimes we're just toying with it. And even personally, you know, I, I can do that. I can yeah. dwell on a thought. But I just my experience in my life and with others is there's not that aggressive war-like cry of like, no, I'm not going to let this come in and right. impose its will on me. Because the spirit has an agenda for me too, right? Um, and so I, I would say that is that that's the mind I think we have to have because the truth is those desires are trying to wage war on us, and so right. either we get on the offensive and get aggressive and reject that stuff with yep. a tenacity, or we be passive and we kind of get swallowed up by it if we let it come in. Right. Um, so there's that opportunity we have when we first begin to see it. Do we? Do we justify it? Do we let it hang around? Do we let it continue to eat away at our moral compass, as you will, you know, or, or begin to throw that off? And the, the more that happens, uh, it's kind of like that people talk about the frog in the kettle. We just slowly change, slowly change, rather than, again, turning, waging war against the sin in our lives, waging war against the stuff that wants to destroy us. I mean, uh, was it, uh, Scripture says that Satan's like a roaring lion, uh, moving around seeking whom he can devour. And um, it, you know, one of the things the lions do is they kind of hide, and then all of a sudden they, they pounce on you when it's too late. Uh, I love watching those safari things where it's got, you know, you see the, the cheetah crawling really low or something, and you can tell the animals, tell something's going on, and one of them, their head will turn, and they're kind of looking like, what in the world's going on? I'm going, just run now. If, you, if you're scared, <laughs> if you're thinking of something, run. A lot of times they don't. They just look around and start eating some more and doing whatever. And the next thing you know, okay. man, they're in an all-out fight for their life. And he's saying, you know, fight now. Yeah. You know, when you know these things are not in your life that shouldn't be there or things are in your life that shouldn't be, how do we fight? Mm-hmm. Um, how do we run? So I would ask you that question. How do we uh, wage the war? What are some weapons you, you use to wage yeah. war? Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we talked about confessing. I feel like that's important, being honest with it um, and even praying about it right even being in prayer you know jesus said watch and pray so you yeah. don't fall into temptation right so we got to be on our guard and so i would say pray you know for those out you, you out there just wrestling with things sometimes when i'm in the midst of temptation i'm praying mm-hmm. like god keep me like i feel this pull to do this like i don't want to do this lord right. like this is wrong there's a desire there and so i'll begin to pray like i just reject this right now give me a stronger desire jesus right. And so for me, praying is a big deal, even in the midst of that, um, in the midst of that temptation or struggle, uh, that would be where I, where I kind of stick with. But I also think I'm careful what I let come in my mind. And the times I'm not yeah. is really when I get into trouble. Right. Um, we, we act based on what comes in. Yeah. So the things I watch, guys, let's just be practical. Like, yeah. You know, there's certain things my wife will laugh at me. She's like, I'm not watching that movie because yeah. <laughs> it might be fine for her, right. but it's going to provoke things in me. Right. You know, and like, maybe it won't for her, but I got to be honest and say like, this is going to push me in a direction that's away from Jesus. And right. I'm going to dwell on something I don't want to dwell on. So I would say, be careful what you let come in through TV in particular, movies and things like that. And that's just part of the way I get on the offensive in, in making war. Yeah. No, you're not even going to cross yeah, yeah. the battlefronts and get into my mind here. And you've mentioned two things. You've mentioned, you know, as you talked about that, I'm not going to let it in, but you also mentioned uh, Katie helps you. Yeah. She goes, I don't need to watch that because you don't need to watch that. And it may be fine for her, but not you. So you've got, in your spouse, you've got some accountability there. But then you also mentioned earlier this week, being in the prayer group mm-hmm. with a number of other guys, your confession wasn't just quietly in your closet. Um, and, and it's not that I don't think God can help us. God does want to help us. He sends his Holy Spirit to help us. But there's something else of realizing we can't do life alone. And when I've got other guys now, they're going to come up and say, hey, how's that going? You confess that. So I'm going to hold you accountable. It's, it takes on a whole other level of, oh, man, I've got people fighting with me. I can't yeah. fight this. A lot of things we can't fight on our own. But we're also too ashamed to confess and let other people help us turn um, I've got a buddy who, who was involved in an extramarital affair 
And um, he finally, he had come out of it. And, um, you know, as we were talking through it, um, some, of the, some of our other buddies were hanging around and they had become such accountability partners with him that um, they would go to his house and take his phone and read through his texts. They would go, I mean, they were like on him saying, you know this is wrong. We're your brothers in Christ. You cannot be doing this. And they loved him enough. I mean, he hated them for it at the time. But he also realized, I've told y'all and I've given you permission, so I can't back y'all off. And, uh, and so, I mean, they were, they were all over him. He said, I got so bad. Uh, wanting to avoid those guys, he said, I was going to Dunkin' Donuts and using a payphone to call this girl I was trying to reach. <laughs> he said it was, but what ended up happening was, he said, I had to, I was trying to find ways to get to this stuff because they were trying to help me flee from the temptations. They were trying to pull me away. And so we've got to make that turn from evil. We've got to turn mm-hmm. and run from it. And so, is there anything else you want to add, Pastor, Pastor Stephanie, any of that? No, I mean, I just want to be honest, too, and say to everyone that this is a real thing. Yeah. You know, there's many times in my life when I was younger that I thought, why am I still feeling this? I thought, God, you're going to take this away. And so my heart would just go out to you who are wrestling with stuff. And I just want to say, that's normal. Yeah. Um, That's real. And all of us experience it and so I just want to because what can happen is we can get into condemnation yeah we can feel like the devil will let the devil guilt and shame us right. away from Jesus and instead we should embrace that accusation in yeah. a way and go you're right Lord I need you like yeah. here I am and so I just want to let you know don't feel like you're not in the faith just because you're wrestling even with heavy things that's not that's not true we're wrestling with them too but the Lord is faithful to deliver us through the, these things so yeah uh, that's that's my that's phenomenal yeah i look at that when people like when i get under conviction uh people are like i'm sick of being under conviction i'm going don't be sick of being under conviction because it's it's a sign that the holy spirit is there he's working on you and um, while i may not like it at the time i have found god's conviction is to point out something in me that needs to go yeah. <laughs> so that i can become what he wants me to be so if we're spending time in prayer where we are humbling ourselves seeking his face uh, and we start to say okay lord show me and god shows me what's wrong the, what we're talking about today the fleeing part the running away the turning from evil that's what has to happen yeah. if i'm going to sincerely seek him if i'm going to sincerely ask him then when he points out the stuff in my life that i'm moving toward that's evil i turn and run from it it might not even be that i've done this stuff yet it's just that i'm moving towards it and i need to turn away and get away from that stuff i need to let god pull me i flee from evil and i turn back toward him and so that's our hope that we will turn from evil we will uh, turn toward the good do what god has called us to do and so i'm going to ask pastor stefan would you pray for us and just pray that into our lives that if people are struggling with something they would figure out how to turn from that lord we just come to you right now with we're thankful uh, that one we can approach you we can be honest with you and transparent with you. And so, Lord, for those who are even watching right now, uh, families, husbands and wives may be struggling. We just confess things openly to you, Lord, knowing that you're faithful and just to help us with that. We don't hide. We don't look to cover ourselves up, but we're honest with you just like a child is with a father. And so, Jesus, we pray that through our honesty, that you would see into our hearts and that you would help us, Lord. Help us deal with these things that we're wrestling with. Father, the the thing that comes to mind is, would you just give us new desires? Because it it seems to work when you actually come into our hearts and you change things for real, where we begin to want you more than we want other things. And so I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would do that work on the inside so that the outside can be for real. And that we would, we would be in love with you. We would be more willing to demonstrate love to others and to those who we're close with. So, Father, I know that you're working to draw us closer to you. And part of that is sometimes the painful process of turning away from things we're used to. Um, but we willingly come and lay those things down right now and reject them so that we might know you more. Thank you, Jesus, for this time. And have our hearts, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Stefan. Thank you all for joining with us as well. 
Um, but, you know, let's thank Pastor Steph and give him some love down there in the Facebook chat room. Yeah, give him a heart emoji. Uh, those who are watching <laughs> online, uh, it's been great to have you here. If you're looking for ways to help you further your prayer, uh, you can go out to the nas.church slash prayer, and there's a link there that you can click that will take you to the return. There at the return, if you look at the downloadable guides, there's a prayer guide that has verses of Scripture on the very topic that we've talked about today, turning from evil. And if you don't know how to pray, you can just simply pray those Scriptures. Uh, pray those back to God. That's a powerful thing to pray God's Word to Him. And if you're looking for ways maybe to start fasting, to turning from some things of the world so you can focus on God a little more, you've never done that before, uh, there are helpful guides for you there as well. Uh, that will just say helpful guides for prayer and fasting, and you can read through those. And hopefully they will help you on your continued journey away from evil and toward God. Uh, so until we see you again next time, God bless you, NAS family. We love you.